Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Hacknet. Uh, I looked around to see if I could find as small a hint as I could online, and uh, it was pretty easy. There are a lot of people having trouble with this mission. Uh, I, f I feel a little bad that I didn't think of this myself, honestly, but you know, these things happen. Uh, and what was suggested is that... Uh, we were using this, we, we got to this server real early, and we said, well, this has all the information we need right here, right? And so we didn't need to get admin on it, but what if we did? What if there's something here? Uh, I don't know what might be here. There shouldn't be, I would think, a password, but maybe, I don't know, maybe this company stores all their users' passwords in plain text, who knows? I but maybe we'll find something here that'll uh, bypass port 104 or something for us, I don't know. Um, so I think that um, breaking into this is a good idea. And we do have the tools for doing that. Uh, so let's, I guess, get started. You know what? Let's, um, let's rem remove this note so we have a little bit more memory to work with. And uh, make sure we have a shell going locally. Uh, that has a trap on in case something crazy should happen to us. And uh, let's start analyzing the firewall. Is it biotech or something? Biology? I... Gosh, this font is hard to read. I O G L? Are those the only letters there? I O G E L. Oh, it's bi. There's a B somewhere that I'm missing, or it's biogel? I don't see the B. There it is, yeah, biogel. Biogel. Okay, fine. Now we can. We can make it, get a new connection with the firewall already busted for us. Uh, and we'll do FTP first. Interesting, that doesn't even start the timer. Cool. Uh, FTP bounce on 21, and like web on 80, please. And we have more time now. Last time it was just like 60 seconds. Why do we have like 90 now? Uh, we don't have enough memory to run SSH crack. That's kind of a pain. But uh, we seem to have enough time. I'm not too worried about it. We can always disconnect after this and then re-log in as admin with actual privileges. Uh, instead of like through hack, like this will get us the password, right? Then we can disconnect and log in as ac admin, like legitimately. Admin united. All right. We'll just remove all the logs, disconnect, wait for all those to finish, and then uh, connect back in. So having having the uh, shell running locally cost us some time, but. Um, But, uh, because we didn't have enough memory, right? Cost us memory, which cost us time. But, you know, we had enough time to break through all the layers of security, and that means we can restart our timer. And importantly, we were protected in case, like, something went badly wrong. I guess. Uh, ls log, yeah, so, oops, cd to log and look around. And indeed, there's not much here. All right, so what is the deal? Uh, let's check in bin, see if there's a, some sort of hacking tool. No. What's on the message board? Yeah, can, so this is, the, this is the same message board being run by that other thing. Um, let's see what's in listings, I guess. 
So we've read all of these. What's enclosed? Nothing. Okay. Oh. Huh. Well, that's a little disappointing. I thought we would find something a little bit more useful here. Was there something that we deleted in the... Uh, when we deleted the logs, was there an entry there telling us what password this guy used and we just deleted our, our way in? That would be kind of a shame. Ah, but this message board had a thing saying what IP you connect to will govern what messages we give you, I guess? So can I, like, now that I'm logged, okay, first of all, let's scan the network. Aha, now we're getting somewhere. The production asset server. So maybe that has their, like, hacking tool, right? So we don't need this node either. Uh, and the guy's pacemaker is down here somewhere, right? I don't remember where exactly, or no, shoot, I forgot already. There it is. So we don't need to keep his IP either. Let's just close the notes. That ought to give us enough space to be able to run two tools at once when we're, when we're breaking this next server down. See the log, remove all the logs. And connect to their asset server. Now we're making progress. Uh, we have the four tools to get through this. We're protected by a, a shell running on our own machine. We don't need any, what's the word, proxy bypassing shell things. So let's start analyzing and see where we get. Oh, it's just Biogel again? Biogel? FTP using the same for shame. The same password on both servers. They, they should be embarrassed. Uh, what's left? SMTP? Okay, and so hopefully since this is an asset server from here, we'll find a binary that's like how to break through this, but maybe we'll find some passwords, who knows. Either way, it should be useful. Um, so we bin, no, home, production. Oh, what's in the, what's in the media pack? This is a bunch of binary junk, all right, uh, output. We have a catalyst driver, sort of. All right, let's grab this. SCP, the KBT thing. So this looks like the ES exe file we'll be using to break through that port. We'll re grab the readme on the port tester because we'll need that. And I don't know if this catalyst driver is the same one we had before. I feel like we had a catalyst driver config or something. I don't know. Let's read the readme while we're here. We've got time. It's made for testing the medical port on 104. Very good. This tool can be deployed to test it. It's designed. Don't use it on live devices. Take care. Very good. OK, so that's how we're going to get through port 104 on devices in general. Uh, and that's all we needed, right? There's nothing else here that we could get. I mean, we, we downloaded all the files here, right? So. CD log, please. Jeez. All right, disconnect. So now we have a way to get through the firmware protection on this guy's thing. And we can run KBT.
on port 104. And yeah, it's starting to get more red over there. Can't tell exactly what the progress is like, but I guess it's good. Yeah, it's getting flooded, all right. Let me in. Now we can port hack to find the password. And let's go to log in just so I can see what the password was. Madison, all right. So now if we want, we can look at the remote monitor. It looks good. Uh, huh. It's making little beeping noises, just so you guys know. So it looks like he's doing fine. Uh, what do we got on the files? On the file system here. We have like a bunch of stuff that's probably not interesting in home, bin. Yes, this is all lame. Uh, but in KBT Pacemaker, we have a readme, cat readme. All files will be detected and can be nominated. Just upload a file, I'm fine, very good. So that's all we have to do, I guess. But we have to do something else, don't we? Why do we not need this eAdmin account? That's what I want to know. Oh, right. So we have to log in first. Um, so we look at the remote monitor, and from here there's an admin login button. Hello? Doesn't do anything. I guess we're already there? View firmware. OK. Access denied. Log in first. OK, log in. A secondary login, yes. Oh look, here's another way we could find the uh, the IP of the other server if we needed it. So we're gonna log in as eadmin tens eighty six. Login complete. Administrate firmware. So now, if we wanted to. Could we upload it, I think? Or do we have to do it through that menu there? I'm not exactly sure. View monitor, firmware, valid firmware currently active. I see, so what we'll do is probably upload another one and then it'll just be in the list. And then we'll click here to turn it on. Okay. SCP home. What was it called? Eidolon something? No, I'm going to have to disconnect and look it up now, aren't I? Um, it wasn't a KBT thing, it was an Eidolon thing. Was it cycle test maybe? I'll try one more time. Upload home cycle, I don't know. Okay, but we now know where we're going anyway. Let's get rid of those logs and check out what's, what's going on. It was called pacemaker, pacemaker firmware cycle test is what we want to upload. And we have a Catalyst Driver config and a Catalyst Driver DLL. I don't know what those are about. They don't seem to be about this mission. Uh, are those in my sys? No, we don't use those. I don't know what Catalyst is. Maybe it's going to be useful at some later date. I don't know. Uh, OK, so we'll connect back to this thing. View monitor. SCP home pacemaker. Why is it not tab completing?
I don't have copy paste. Oh, it's upload, not SCP. Upload home pacemaker firmware cycle test. Okay, very good. Okay, so that worked. Oh, did I put it in the wrong place? I did. Put it into KBT pacemaker. No, whatever. We'll just we'll just delete it and upload it again. I don't know why tag complete wasn't working on that. All right, I don't know. I just typed some dumb thing, I guess. Okay, so now let's CV into KBT Pacemaker. And this is where the things are supposed to go, right? Uh, let's now upload home pacemaker, whatever. And now when we look at the monitor and look at the firmware, there's another option we can turn on. Ugh, so this is like how we're gonna kill the guy. We're committed if we push this button. Makes me a little uneasy. We have not really done our due diligence on whether this is a good thing that the guy wants done. But, uh, you know, it's just a game. And uh, in the name of uh, progressing forward to see how things are going, we will, we will kill this digital individual who hopefully uh, wanted it to happen. Um, so we choose this one. Activate, please. Confirm, yes. So it's uploading now. Oops. I, I went to remove all my logs, but uh, I guess it also, of course... Uh, Hmm. Uh, so did it did it take or what? Maybe I, I'm gonna I'm gonna activate it again. I guess it, it says that's the one that's active, but waiting for all this stuff to happen seems to have. We, we seem to have to wait for this to happen without going anywhere else. We'll remove our logs after that, after we watch him flatline, or go crazy, who knows. Firmware update complete. Oh, that's bad. 727. Alright. Well, we'll wait for the alarm to go out of the danger state. Yeah, he's having a bad time. Zero. Yeah, that's rough. Well, rest in peace. Why is this number staying high while this graph is going lower and lower? All right, let's remove all. Well, we got we got all the logs already. All right, no, sorry about that, man. Um, boy, they ought to throw me in jail for doing this, but you know that's life, I guess, as a pro hacker. Uh, what? Alright, this is not the one I wanted. We can read this in a minute. I wanted to see how this CSEC thing went. Congratulations, they're happy. We're current ranking number one, okay? So now we got a message from V. This is a bit unorthodox, but I pulled some strings. I guess V is the vapor or whoever that person was? You'll be the one who did the BitCon. That did the bit contract before, looking for what happened there. I haven't actually done it. That didn't happen. They're congratulating me for having done this thing, but I have not done it yet. I did Dune Bug first. So this sounds like a bug? I'm not sure what they're talking about. So we didn't actually look into what happened with Bit. Uh, he just finished 
So you're good to go. I guess we'll have to do the bit one next. And then maybe this one will start to make sense. Maybe we can skip the bit one, but I don't want to do that because we don't even know where to look, right? More collaboratively. Yes, yeah, so they're pulling strings to ask me what happened. If I sound confident, there's a very substantial incentive. Trace kill. Ah, so this is probably a path, a program that um, it's a de it's an encrypted version of a program that can stop active traces against me. Well, wait a minute. Does that mean? All right. Well, let's go get that. I suppose. Um, password is DX122 capital DX. Okay. Uh, so let's go grab that right now, I suppose. But we won't actually reply to say that we're ready until we've done the mission we're supposed to have done before this. Uh, I guess we gotta log in. And then in bin TK, uh, we'll SCP trace kill locally. We're not going to decrypt it on the server. That would be a bad plan. Um, CD home. Decipher, right? The um, trace kill dot deck with the password of um, DX122 DX, as I recall. Yeah. So that seems, I seem to have at least remembered the password properly. Uh, and I assume this will create an exe file I can use. Encryption header vapor trick encoding, yeah. Okay, and now we have a thing called tracekill.exe, which we need to put into our bin folder. Move. Oh my god, typing is hard! Trace kill.exe into. dot dot? Can I do that? Oh my gosh, no. Trace kill.exe. So here on exe, will it show me, like. I don't have. How do I put it into my bin folder? The, like, this is a very easy problem in a real terminal. But like the move command doesn't actually work properly here. Uh, uh, and I can't run it, right? Trace kill. No. Help SCP? Oh, that doesn't work. I have to help. Yes, yeah, so this move. Ah, okay. So you have to. You can't specify just a directory with move. You have to put it. You have to give it a, a path, including the name that it's going to be in. Okay. So move trace kill dot exe to dot dot slash bin slash trace kill dot exe. And now we have trace kill. Wow, uses up a ton of memory. But um in fact not even not so much that we can't even run other programs while we're doing this. Uh, so I assume we could use this to log into some, but but it, we could log into that server earlier that was like super crazy traced up to the gills, and I'm guessing this trace kill thing permanently disables the trace, and then we can turn off trace kill and uh, hack into it more uh, in, in a more 
stately fashion, <laughs> uh, rather than being in, in such a hurry. Okay, uh, cool. So we found a new program. We got a new contact. Even though it seems like maybe we weren't supposed to have gotten it yet. Uh, I think that um, I'll leave things here for this episode. Next episode, we'll track down what happened to Bit, and then we'll see what the deal is with this with Vapor, who thinks we already did that other stuff. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.